Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast, where we discuss the previous week in gaming, maybe go over a topic too. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah. Thank you for me as always. Alex? Salutations. How are you, Alex? I'm okay. We just had technical yeah, difficulties we, yeah. for about an hour. So. Yeah, it was stressing me out, yeah, so I figured yeah. it out, but mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, man, I just need a new computer. Hey, man. This Mac is not working for yeah, me. Yeah, this Mac is struggling to keep up. I with mean, how it's, great it's old. It's n- it's nine years old. Jesus. To be fair, it's eleven. It, Twenty eleven. It's, it's on crutches for yeah. sure. Right? I mean, it's running better than what I thought it would be. That's Ooh. true. Yeah. Alex, what's up? We go live every Friday on every podcast service imaginable. If we're not on one, reach out to us. We'll get on it. Um, every YouTube as well every Friday. If you want that early or want to support us, you head over to patreon.com slash easy achievers. Give us the mm-hmm. buck for an exclusive Patreon that I'm very proud of. I want to uh, throw that out there. We did record a Patreon exclusive that actually went live last week. It was really yes, good. We, did. we had a lot of fun with that one. That's just us talking having more of a casual chat just, rather than being centered yeah. around games it's just kind of a general chat of everything about just rambles. rambles 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 grambles if you know a- a- avenger time um i don't <laughs> if you're a flea roller don't worry just five stars everywhere give us all the likes give us all of the googles and the androids alex yes if they want to scream at us they can also go to our socials twitter at evm at thousand at crazy flip skater News is packed, jammed today. We have a lot is to it? go over this this week. So it's been slow these last few weeks. That this week, mm-hmm. we got plenty to talk about. Tell but Alex, me, first, me, I have man. a question. Mm, what question? have you been playing, Elijah? Today, as of January twenty eighth, I have completed or I've beaten the story for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. They get that Dumbo, that Dumbledore, that Dumbledore clap. Dumbledore clap, the, Dumbledore clap. The, yep. I don't even know if the mic is picking that up. No, probably not. Mm, probably not. But, yeah, but I clapped. Yeah. Just audi- uh, audibly do a clap yeah. for me in your car yeah. while you're driving right now. Yeah. Uh, but take for your hands you, on the wheel. <laughs> yeah. But I finished the story and I'm going to go back to it to finish everything else. Okay. But you. I finished you it. You thousand it. And thousand all of the achievements, of course. Yes, you did. Um, this is Easy Achiever, so I did achieve things. I yes, achieved you did. all of the achievements. Um, um, yep. Okay. I want your. Pre- I gave my full hmm. impressions mm-hmm. last week where I did not. I don't believe I beat it last week, but okay. I, I was almost done. You have beaten it. Yes, so finally. So the whole game behind you, looking back, yeah, like a like a a World War Two soldier leaving. Okay, <laughs> I'm reminiscing. I, I'm, I'm, I guess Rem- so, yeah. reminiscing. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you think of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? Mm, what do I think of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? I might as well be called Dragon Ball Z Gohan and Piccolo. <laughs> All right, let's see. Hey man, there's a lot of Goku. No, no, there's a lot. Of, there's, there's some. Lot of Goku. There's this. There's, there's a good bit of Goku. There's a lot of Goku. I had fun. Mm-hmm. There are some parts that was really underwhelming. Okay. Um. Any specifics you want to give to the audience? I mean, I the guess. Achievers? I mean, I guess it's not spoilers because I mean, Dragon Ball Z has been out for years, so <sighs> all the story is the same years, thing. So. Yeah. All right, so. So, for example, you know, just the cutscenes. You know, there's you'll get to this one big, you know, big moment, and you feel like they'll 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 they'll, they'll hype it up. You'll be like, oh yeah, it's oh, gonna feel like the show. Happen. And no, and then it's, it's like, just like, like happens in three seconds. Was that like, it? Wait a minute. And then it's a fight. I'm like, I'm excited for the fight, but I mean, I I, I the cutscene is what excites me. Well, the cutscene tells the story. Yeah, the fight is the fight. The story is like where you're supposed to get excited about what's yeah. about to happen, and then when it just happens in five seconds and it doesn't really look that good, it mm-hmm. just kind of looks like the game, and you're like, oh. yeah. My favorite parts, of course, was when you, it's funny enough not playing the game. Fire, uh, father and son, Kamehameha yeah. was done really well. Um, Spirit bomb hitting Kid Buu really well. Um, yeah. Vegeta, pretty well in Majin. Mm-hmm. That was, oh, that pretty, was pretty cool. good. That yeah. was pretty good. That was almost like, like page for page from the anime. It was, mm-hmm. That was really good. Um, the Gohan Super Saiyan two. That was that was pretty close too. Very, very yeah, the right. when he Just snaps and does that. Yeah, that was pretty that, cool. That was all pretty cool. Yeah, um, I was telling Alex, I think last night, it, it just gets so close and yeah. then it misses. It do something. You know, you, you, every time it's like this is so cool, mm-hmm. but like every every time it's like this is cool. 
but like it's always one thing that like ah, mm-hmm. why didn't you do that like because it's almost like we're going 80 percent instead of just 100 percent. like we're mm-hmm. just doing it instead we're just doing 80 percent of the anime it's like god I'm, I'm, I'm missing so many this game that i like this game does this thing where it's like it's going like a good solid like what's uh, what's the speed limit let's go let's go f- let's go 55 miles okay, an hour right now right. We're definitely that's, not that's, in that's school zone. That's the no. Yeah, I mean, all right. So let's go. Uh, let's uh, you know you're Get on out the highway, the way, kids. You no know way. Actually, you know, just I I ninety five. You okay. can go. What, what was it? Seventy, I think. Seventy five. Yeah, okay, please. Right, probably eighty. I'll go. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, Nine. let's say let's say you you're 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 hitting at a good seventy mm-hmm. seventy five. The story is like hit. It's hitting six. It's like you're on. You're going sixty something. Mm-hmm. And then I'll get to points where you're like, oh, yeah, I'm top speeding to the then 75s. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you're like, oh, okay, it's going 55s. And mm-hmm. it goes back up to the 70s. No, I don't want to go 55. I'm like, I just, why, why can't I stay a solid straight 70, if anything, just the whole way through? I would almost prefer, and it almost does it, where, like, fast forward, mm-hmm. like, a little quicker. Yeah. Because I don't think this game lends itself well to being 40 hours. Uh, That's about the time that it takes you to beat the game. I it's, just I, I just clocked it at what <laughs> I just clocked it at thirty I think I finished the story and I, I haven't I finished 40. everything yet I think I was forty but I did everything okay so, so I'll probably give it about ten more hours up to finish everything yeah probably It'll probably a little less since you kind of know what to do yeah um and that's all my sentiments with it I echo everything I said last week yeah that that's what I think Alex <sighs> I went. And played some Kingdom Hearts. Oh my god. Because I wanted to... We're so, not surprised, right? No, yeah, no, right. People are like, oh god, Kingdom Hearts again. Yep. Um, but I thousand Kingdom Hearts 3 on Xbox, <clears throat> right? But I never f- played it on PlayStation. Okay. So I'm playing it on PlayStation now, and I want Platinum it. So I'm trying yep. to see if I can beat it before Remind comes out on Xbox. Mm-hmm. Because I kind of want to play Remind now before it gets spoiled for me. Because yep. there's apparently cool stuff that happens. Yeah. So I'm trying to get it get through on PlayStation and play Remind. Also, I want to mess around with Old Keeper a little bit. Yeah, I was about to say it's exciting. I'm excited to get to that stuff. Mm-hmm. Old Keeper, you get of course all the lucky emblems. Yeah, Oblivion. You, oh, it's almost easier, Alex. You only have to beat the game in the hardest difficulty. And you know, hard mode, I could have done. I've heard critical is devastating. <laughs> Look, I was so, having fun with the normal, mm-hmm. and I'm just like that last battle. <laughs> All right, that last battle, I'm just like I wasn't. I like there was a lot going on, so I like I died once because I was like, what was going on? But right. then I caught it. Mm-hmm. But you know, you get to those points, you're like, oof, that was a close one. But like, I can't imagine critical. Me either, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to attempt it only because it's. I'm just. I need to. You know what I mean? Just the Kingdom Hearts in me. It's like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Didn't you say there was a new game plus, or is that a no, different game? No, it's what, a different. What am I thinking of? I think you're thinking of. Days oh, Gone. Days Gone. Days, Days Gone. You were just mentioning discussion. that. Yeah, we just mentioned it because I saw trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm excited to try that. Speaking, Alex of Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. A new Kingdom Hearts coming soon. This is over by Gamatsu by Sauramana. Two new Kingdom Hearts teams separate from the Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kingdom Hearts Union X teams have been established with Square Enix according to, quote, 13 questions of darkness, end quote. <laughs> so Kingdom Hearts. Q&A posted on the Japanese uh, Kingdom Hearts Twitter account today, and one of those teams will release a title, quote, surprisingly soon, end quote. The QA reads, while a traditional Kingdom Hearts will take some time, the Kingdom Hearts Union X team will first be making an unexpected announcement tomorrow. Furthermore, in addition to the Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kingdom Hearts Union X teams, two new teams are currently at work and one of their titles is coming surprisingly soon. With the release of the update today, as well as January 23rd, release of the downloadable content Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind for PlayStation 4, the QA also touched the potential future updates and downloadable content. Quote, we don't have any updates planned at this time, but if something comes up in the future, then we'll deal with it, the Q&A said. As for downloadable content, Remind is first and last. We're already working on the next title, end quote. Of course. So we got more Kingdom Hearts coming. Yeah. Right? Not yeah. shocking. Made yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Top charts, right? You mm-hmm. don't get on top of MPD for a few months and not make a sweet go to the title. So yeah. I'm very excited for that. I did not expect two teams now, right? So we got two teams. Kingdom Hearts 3 was mm-hmm. separate from these teams. Do you assume 3 is now going into these two teams? I assume so because they're pretty much done with 3. Unless they're going to go ahead and start brainstorming for the next game. Unless they're like 
planning an update, which I don't think they are. I think they're just, mm-hmm. I think they're on the groundwork to whatever is next. Yeah. And then whatever the next saga is going to be. I don't know what yeah, it's yeah. going to be. And then we got the hints at what's coming, Alex, because mm-hmm. you know what I wanted. Mm-hmm. I don't want Kingdom Hearts 4. I want Kingdom Hearts, another mobile game. Oh, of course <laughs> Kingdom you Kingdom Hearts Project Xehanort. This is over by Gematsu by Saramano again. Kingdom Hearts Project Xehanort. Square Enix has announced, quote, Project Xehanort. A new Kingdom Hearts experience for iOS and Android due out in spring 2020 with in-app purchases. Shocking. The tagline for the game asks, quote, Why did he become the Seeker of Darkness? End quote. <laughs> the company is holding a, quote, oh, Guess no. the name campaign for fans. Uh, to guess the official title of Project Xehanort, here are the rules. The get the guess the name Twitter campaign is here. If you can guess the name of the upcoming Project Xehanort title, you can win big. To participate, simply follow our new Twitter account at Project Xehanort. Add in a comment with your guess. Make sure to include the hashtag KH Name Contest. The campaign will end January 28th, 2020 at 6.59 p.m. Pacific Time. Ten winners will be the best guesses. will win big. For reference, um, I wrote this down. So I want us to guess the name. Okay. And... I want to see if we win this. Okay. Okay. So, for reference, everyone at home, if you want to play along. Okay. These is every name that Kingdom Hearts has come out with. Okay? Yep. So, Kingdom Hearts 1. Okay. Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 3. That's the mm-hmm. easy ones, right? Yeah. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Kingdom Hearts Coded. Kingdom it, Hearts... Was it Coded or Recoded? Recoded <gasps> was the re-release. Okay, coded so was a mobile called, game. Co- gotcha, okay. And then Recoded for DS. Gotcha. Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, mm-hmm. which is the mobile game. The mobile one. And then Kingdom Car- uh, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. That's, of course, the 3D game for the 3DS. Yeah. Basing our knowledge of Kingdom Hearts, our knowledge of Xehanort, what is Kingdom Hearts Pro- Project Xehanort's name? Kingdom Hearts... The prequel. <laughs> it's just real simple. They're going to break trend. No. Kingdom um, Hearts before. That's all it's... <laughs> He's the Seeker of Darkness, right? That's, yeah. that's going to play into the title, right? Probably. Yeah. There's something it, something with it, darkness in it. Because, of course, the theme in this is th- the, the title is always linked to what's gonna what's happening in the game, right? 358 mm-hmm. over 2. That's the two people living out 358 days. Yeah. Jeon and Roxas, of course. Chain of Memories. The Chain of Memories Sora has to follow to get to nominate to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dream Drop Distance. The 3Ds. The, yeah. Three, <laughs> I mean, it's in 3D also. Yeah. It's yeah. the dream the, they're in the dream and they're dropping between Riku yeah. and Zora. So they do tend to follow what the narrative is is. So, huh. with that in mind, what is Project Xehanort going to be called? And by the way, Union Cross, I have nothing for that. <laughs> uh Union Cross, Union, everybody's oh, getting everybody's getting together. Well, they're called unions, aren't they? Yeah, they're yeah they're called they're unions, unions and they cross. Right. I mean, I guess too. They're fighting. Yeah. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, I'll let you go first because I have no slightest Kingdom idea. Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Dark. Dark begins. <laughs> dark beginnings. Dark beginnings. <laughs> um, for some reason I wanted to say Realm of Darkness, but. That's, it's, it's too, too easy. It's, it's too easy. Yeah. It has to be unique. Um, I don't think mine's right. God. Norded. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Norded. Stop. That's, Mate, that's Alex's dog. He's, he keeps whining. Yeah. Um, he needs all the attention. Yeah. No. I don't know. Project Xehanort. Oh, Project God. Xehanort. I, don't, I don't know. Xehanort. I don't know. And he's 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 what the, he's the what of darkness the seeker of darkness seeker is what of darkness. it's called because he's seeking um, out the many beginning like not beginning sorry the the many people he's gonna put himself in like mm-hmm. throughout time. I I, I I for sure feel like the word darkness is gonna be darkness the title. is for sure in this right um, it has to be. And if it's not, <laughs> we seem like a bunch of fake fans. How about this, Alex? Mm. I'm gonna let you mull mull over it a little okay. bit. Okay. I'm gonna let you stew on it. We'll come back at the end of the show. Okay. Um, if if something springs your mind, mm-hmm. shout me out. Okay. Okay. Microsoft OneDrive. I don't want you right now. Okay. Relax. All right. I'm gonna let this man out. Wait. Yeah. Go ahead, okay. please. Star Wars Kotor rumored to be in development. Dual Shockers 
This is, of course, from Dual Shockers by Logan Moore. After over 15 years since the release of the second installment in the series, it seems like a new Knights of the Old Republic game could finally be in the pipeline. In a new report from Sinlix, it is said that EA is currently working on a new Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic game that will serve as a remake of sorts of the original title. This information comes from two separate sources that spoke with Sinlix and explained that this new KOTOR project would be more of a sequel than an actual remake due to how it would be altered. The game is said to incorporate elements of the first two games, such as certain story beats that would officially bring them into certain, uh, to, into the current Star Wars canon. A specific developer or studio that could be working on the project wasn't mentioned. The same report goes on to state that EA has a variety of Star Wars projects that are currently in the works outside of the rumored Knights of the Old Republic game. Some of the other titles or the brief we mentioned to be in development include a sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and another Star Wars project for the Nintendo Switch. None of these games have officially been announced just yet. But maybe EA will reveal more later this year. I want to play it. I've never played the original KOTOR. I didn't either. I played like the very beginnings of, I think, KOTOR 1. Mm -hmm. I have... They're old. I have (laughs) two on... Is it my computer? I think I have it on Steam. I think it's like the the, the Sith one or whatever. I think that's the second one. Sith one. It has... has The second one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has like the weird white and red mask thing on the cover. Yeah. Yeah, That's nice to do, probably. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested too. I'm curious on how they'll modernize this because mm. they, they were so in, not in their time, but it was turn based. I don't think they'll do that again, of course. I think it'll be more of an action RPG. Mm. Um, but I'm very excited what this might become, uh, especially like if you get really nerdy, it's like your armor and that accounts for a certain amount, like actual RPG, Mass Effect like type game where you're mm. upgrading things. But I, I'm excited. I want that. Give me a KOTOR game that's good mm-hmm. and new. Do you, do you think that they're ever going to bring that MMORPG to anywhere else? No. I, I don't think they want that to exist anymore. Really? Because, I thought they still updated and everything. So they, so they do update it, mm-hmm. but that's from... I think technically that's from before they even bought Star Wars. Hmm. So I don't think they Because I do play. enjoy that game and I wish it was on Xbox because mm-hmm. my computer can't run it, man. Mm-hmm. And I want to play it. <laughs> I think technically it's Lucas Arts too. Is it? Like a Lucas Arts, and yeah, that yeah, technically yeah. doesn't exist anymore. So that's funny. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't think they. I, I think I heard a rumor that they don't like that still a th- thing because <laughs> they don't control it. Like, or mm. some, there's some weird thing like that. Um, yeah. Maybe they could close it. And maybe I, I missed. Yeah, heard. it's by Lu- Lucas Arts and uh, Electronic Arts. Yeah, Lucas Arts doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so yeah. that's funny. That's funny. Um, but yeah, EA I think still has the license and all that mm. uh, so i guess they're just sitting on it and w- i mean they're still making money on it you, oh yeah you, for sure it's a free game up to a certain level i think uh 20 20 and then I you so. and then you can pay for the subscription just like wow basically mm. um which is, it, it's a fun game but <clears throat> it's one of those where you're like you have to like s- like play it mm. for sure and you have to like be forgiving with how everything looks because it's yeah. great i mean it there's some, some like parts that looks cool old. though the environments look nice, especially. I think it would look better if I had a better PC. I never had a great PC running the game, so everything mm. just didn't. Nothing had real detail, so it was hard to like take anyone seriously. Yeah. Um, Alex, that's all about Star Wars. We're going into Pokemon. Pokemon Home Details released. This is over in the Washington Post by Ellis Favis. Pokemon Home, a cloud service app for storing and looking up data on creatures from different Pokemon games, is arriving February 2020. Pokemon Home lets you store creatures you can various Pokemon games, manage your collection, and trade them between titles and other players. When it releases next month, you can download Pokemon Home for free on your mobile devices and Nintendo Switch. The base experience will be free, but if you want access to the full suite of content, you'll have to purchase a premium plan. Without paying, you can store up to... 30 Pokemon at once. Premium options. Upgrade that limit to 6,000. <laughs> As a free user, you have access to most features, but premium subscription holders also have a higher trading limit. The ability to make no, to move Pokemon from the 3DS Pokemon Bank as well as the judge function which gives users on-demand information on how strong their Pokemon is. The annual subscription costs $16, nearly as much as a Nintendo Switch online subscription of 20 bucks. Quarterly $4.99 and monthly $2.99 subscription are available as well. So this is the new bank. This is home, yeah. which basically is going to encapsulate everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is a needed thing because I assume the old way 
just wasn't as good as what they're doing now. This is 6,000. That seems like a lot more than what they probably were already doing. Maybe it wasn't, but yeah. um, this just seems like a more boutique thing. I don't know if I'd use it because, I mean, I haven't played the new one yet, really. And it's I think it's for people who want who like really into whole, it because there's a national Pokédex in it, so you can ha- you can even yeah. catalog every Pokemon you've got. So mm-hmm. like, you can go all the way back from I I don't know how far you can go, but I mean you can go pretty far and basically fill out every Pokemon that's ever been in a game. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Alex, yes, Destiny Two has been on fire the last few hours. Uh, this is over by Kotaku by Luke Plunkett. Bungie has taken Destiny 2 offline entirely at the time of posting. It remains unplayable. Um, This is, and I believe at the time of uh, of recording, it also is unplayable um, uh, because of the reasons we'll go through right now. After an issue emerged with a hotfix released early today, where players were beginning, uh, sorry, uh, players began losing their glimmer, bright dust, infusion materials, and or other types of game currencies. Mm. This dealer released a short statement this morning saying the game had been taken offline, quote, to prevent further loss of materials, end quote. At 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, they have discovered the source of the problem, but have yet to complete the necessary testing to push the fix online. Note that this is in the case of simply losing the last batch of stuff you picked up. Some players have lost vast stashes, uh, uh, swaths of their stash, including some of the game's rare Senate shards and entire Glimmer reserves. Hmm. Terrifying stuff. Terrifying stuff. Now, as of right now, mm. we did have a good update from Destiny. They go over, hey, we fixed it. It's still offline, I believe, but we are pushing a fix through that will refresh what you have since reset. I'm glad I'm not today. on there. So, so they're so there. they're giving everyone everything they lost back. Yeah, but I do think there's like a sweet spot of like an hour. If you gained anything, you would lose it. Yeah, I don't think that's most people. I think most people are fine. So they're reverting everyone back to the uh, reset time. So I think everyone's fine now. Hopefully, no one actually lost anything of consequence. Um, but sorry to hear that. Yeah. Over on Destiny, I uh, we haven't played in a while. Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a little while. I still keep my ear to the subreddit and things like that. And yeah. They recently had a giant community puzzle they just did where it looked nuts, Alex. If you want oh, to look okay. at it, you, you can look it up if you want. It's I haven't even done the new raid yet. You were working on the raid. Yeah, we we did a little bit of it. Um, yeah. but like, just imagine like a bunch of, um almost octagons <clears throat> connecting like like lines okay. basically making like electricity circuits it was really cool looking yeah um but it it, uh, it was like the super complex puzzle that lasted five days and like the community like had to help each other make they made like spreadsheets and things and, mm. and found it out together and they got a new gun out of it which is really cool okay alex yes the terminator is coming to ghost recon this is by push oh, square man. liam croft otherwise known as Lara Croft started this Wednesday on PlayStation 4. Players will be able to participate in the in-game Terminator live event free of charge, concluding at an undisclosed time. Hmm. That's dope. So Is it only PS4? Uh, yes, I think it was like a, other platforms later on. Okay. I think it's like an early release thing. They didn't really go into it. Um, yeah. But basically, I think there's like a little... You know how they come back in time, like it's like the like yeah, yeah the, it's it's the, I think the, there's the like ball of energy that this sparks. Yeah, I think there's like a little ball of energy you can go that's, see. That's cool. So they're they're coming. I want to see that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I know they teased this a long time ago, so we're finally getting like the fruits of whatever that is, and it looks mm-hmm. cool. Um, um, go ahead. Xehanort's Keyblade. What is it called? Uh, uh damn. Um. Oh, I don't remember. You can probably look it up, but I, I, I don't remember up. what it's called. I'm still trying to think. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> trying to figure it out? Mm-hmm. You're going to win big? Ten people can win big, Alex. Isn't it called... Um, nope. I don't know. It. I was thinking... It has an eye in it. I had a couple in my... What What do you mean it has an eye in it? It has an eye in it. No, no sorry. Like an actual eye in the keyblade. Oh, oh. Like there's oh, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. It. It's just... Uh, let me see. Master Xehanort's keyblade. Keyblade name. Um, I was just I had a, a bunch of names in my head I could, that I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just called the No Name. Or oh, and the Gazing Eye. Gazing Eye is what's the eye in it? It's called. It's the default Lu- Luxu's Keyblade and appears. Okay, or Luxu or Luxu, whatever you say. Yeah, but they call it uh, No Name. Like the other one, the the crazy looking. Do you think everyone that hasn't played Kingdom Hearts goes what? Yeah, right. And why is it called No Name? 
Um, it's a weird name for something. No name, right? I guess there's no bodies. By the way, no bodies are a thing in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, right. An actual living thing. Technically, it isn't live, I guess. Yeah. It's the shell of a person. Yeah. Without a heart. But yeah, I was thinking of different than ones. It actually is. Like, I was thinking of uh, Darkness Dreams. Or an, uh, two just on the a, nose, I feel. Two on the nose? Yeah, because Dream Drop Distance. And they, oh, yeah, yeah. Put in. Jesus Christ. I shot a tag at him. <laughs> you broke the thing, though. I can do it without breaking it. Shut up. Anyways, um, I could see. To, um, mm, door to darkness. <laughs> door to the darkness. Xehanort's door to darkness. Um, Open up his doors. God, what is it? Um, you got something for me? I th- got something for I, me? I thought I had something. Maybe this will help. Um, oh, they were playing chess. Yes, they were. Uh, maybe maybe you could, could use something with the chessboard, like yeah, a, the, like what, like dark chess, a dark pawn, dark pawn, hmm, the pawn of darkness, pawn of darkness, yeah, no, I don't think no, that. I don't know, because he's a seeker of darkness, so I mean, uh, anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dark Star, I don't know. Dark Star, wow, you're really just grasping yeah. straws now. <laughs> Alex, maybe this will brighten up the story a little. Console tariffs aren't happening. This is over in GameSpot by Thank Eddie McCooch. God. The United States and China have agreed to terms on a new trade agreement that will seemingly prevent the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X from becoming even more expensive than they're probably already going to be. The two nations signed the Phase 1 agreement earlier this month. It means that Trump's proposed 25% tax on electronics made in China is shit to the U.S. will not go for it. The pros tariff might have made the new PS5 uh, way more expensive. 25% is a lot of money, especially on parts, because uh, that depends on if they're shipping off parts to make it here or mm-hmm. whatever. But most likely it was 25% off the whole entire thing. So that's if that's like 500 bucks, that's mm-hmm. a that's like another hundred dollars almost mess with that man Mm-mm. but no tariffs as of right now of course things can happen but yeah. as of right now we are in the clear which is very nice especially since we're about to get the consoles and it's funny mm-hmm. enough this is almost like encourages people to buy them just in case the tariffs happen yeah like you buy them now even if the tariffs go down mm, you already bought it before the tariffs happen so yeah food for thought oh apparently the the contest thing that you the name contest thing mm-hmm. apparently it's it's two words and it hits eight letters Oh, that helps a lot. Two yeah. words, eight letters yeah. in total. It says because okay, I, I went to it just mm-hmm. to see, and it says it's a um, it's eight letters, two words, and it says includes in-app purchases. I don't know what that means, but in- includes in-app purchases. It's a mobile game, so that means oh, I got you, guys. But yeah, it's eight letters, two words. Oh, a lot. Of, there's so many different ones. Um, one name, of, name a few gems for me, Alex. Uh, let's see, because I, I I've seen some weird ones. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> is that really? Th- we're we're gays. <laughs> uh, Red Luxum or Lud- Rex Ludum. I don't know what that means. Uh, Vernum Rex. Vernum Rex. Yeah, <laughs> that is the the name of that game in the Kingdom Hearts Three. Remember? Mm. So we were just saying it's just another X. Another X. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, mark even what the fuck uh mark evans destiny the, x destiny. dark path eh, dark path time lost lost soul dark fate Ooh, lost soul's good yeah dark fate's not bad either uh watch it be called kingdom hearts no name well like just watch i know that's not enough letters but like jesus yeah like, just watch they have the audacity to do that probably alex did you ever play silent hill no, I've never played Silent Hill. Well, it's getting two soft reboots. This is by IGN over on Joseph Knopf. Two new Silent Hill games are in the works, according to a new report from a reliable leaker via Eurogamer. Twitter user Aesthetic Gamer was the first to drop the new report. Aesthetic Gamer is known for reliably leaking previous Capcom titles, although Silent Hill was developed and published by Konami and divulged some details about the supposed two new Silent Hill games. According to Aesthetic Gamer, one game will be a soft reboot of the franchise, but the other be an episodic experience similar 
similar to Telltale Games or Until Dawn. Mm. Cool. In other news, while I'm dropping this stuff, and I think I can talk about this. No, you can't. <laughs> I'll mention there is a couple new Silent Hill games in the works, as that gamer said. Konami about two years ago reached out to various developers to pitch ideas for two Silent Hill games. One, a soft reboot of the franchise, and the other, an episodic Telltale Until, Until Dawn style game to go alongside the reboot. I don't know anything more than that, though. But I sure do hope Konami's given the appropriate budget and found the right developer to make those games succeed, end quote. Have you ever had interest in a Silent Hill game? I always liked that Pyramid guy. They you know look, what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. always looked very He reminds me a lot of the guy from Evil Within. The, the dude with the weird locker thing, that. crate thing. I on agree his with head. that, yeah. yeah. If you remember Evil Within, it's mm. the, the, there was a guy... How do I explain this? There's a box, almost like a, like a lock box. Yeah, like an almost perfect cute box, and when you walked up to it, it went like like blood started pouring out of it, and then a person formed. And oh my you had god! Had to fight the person. You're not terrifying. It was. I'm like, it was oh pretty god. scary. And that boss fight was pretty hard because you just had to keep running in a circle. Yep, it, like hitting him every now and then. Um, remember the thing, the the weird grudge chick looking thing. Every time you like get near it, it's like the, the arms will come out of the floor oh, and it'll kill you instantly. I didn't like that very much at all. Yeah, she had so many arms. So many arms. Yeah, she was like insta kill, so you'd have to like run away from her. For some reason, Evil Within, they really liked their gross ladies. Because remember that other chick was like, had like a bunch of, like she walked and she had like a chainsaw or something for an arm, something like that. I can't. Evil Within 2? I never finished 2. I didn't finish 2, but it was at the beginning. Mm. It was in trailers. I mean, I know that one monster thing, she's like. It was, isn't she like? I mean, I know she didn't she get like a weird upgrade type of thing where she changed and like she looks different, or is it the same thing? I assume it's someone different. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never played. I didn't really follow her story yeah. very well. Yeah, <laughs> Alex, mm. for some reason, Atari is making a hotel. This is on IGN by Matt Kim. Atari, the video game current uh, brand currently amid a comeback, has announced its latest venture, Hotels. The video game company announced that it will begin development on a line of Atari themed hotels, with the first one to start construction later this year. Atari announced that it is partnering with the strategy agency gsd group and phoenix arizona based real estate developer true north studio to begin to develop on a hotel themed after the video game brand the plan is to combine a hotel with video game experiences atari is promising a unique lodging experience combining the iconic brand with a one-of-the-kind <clears throat> video game themed destination plans include quote the latest vr and ar end quote games as well as quote state-of-the-art venues and studios to accommodate esports events at least at select venues the first hotel location will be in phoenix arizona while additional hotels are being planned in las vegas denver chicago austin seattle san francisco and san jose would you go to one of these it looks pretty rad if you look it up um if you guys want to follow at home literally just atari hotel and it's cool it looks like a a little hotel and it's made of like the Atari symbol it looks pretty cool um, they don't really go into like what the rooms look like. I like some Atari games, but I've never followed it like that. I mean, you're not 40 years old, so you're fine. I mean, we I weren't just, alive when these were even out. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it's it's like if there's an Atari hotel or a Godzilla hotel, I'm gonna go to the Godzilla you, one. You're gonna go pretend you're gonna hit some buildings. You're gonna smack buildings around. Yeah, man. Have you actually seen that Godzilla hotel in Japan? No, I haven't. There's a, it's cool. Give me a picture. Yeah. Give me. Actually, I'll look it up. Okay. Oh, I got a free. Yeah, because I was gonna say those, those. There's actually it, there's one where like yeah the Godzilla. There's one in the there's like a Godzilla in the lobby and one of the rooms. There's like a bunch of stuff on it. It's, it's what's what's in it. The rooms. Yeah. Um, like, describe for the audience. Describe uh, what it if is I can like. remember correctly, in one of the rooms, I think it has like uh, on the wall. One of the wallpapers, I think, it has like maybe the town. And then there's like a Godzilla head coming out of the wall on one of the sides. It's not in Moscow, right? Is it Moscow? I thought it was Japan. Someone gave me a. Mo- I mean, this could this could be not it. It doesn't look like Godzilla. Here. It just looks like a hotel. Yeah. yeah this this doesn't look like Godzilla stuff. This just <clears> looks <throat> like. It's called Godzilla's Hotel. Uh, God- not- Godzilla Hotel Tokyo. We put in yeah like at tokyo yeah it's it's in japan it's pretty cool because uh, on in one like let's say there's like the bed and right. and one of the windows you they have uh godzilla's eye like like face going just walking across so that's you see his eye cool. and, that's pretty cool yeah see 
So I pulled it up a little bit so you can see some of the stuff. Oh, yeah. I see it. Yeah, so like yeah the, I see yeah. it right here. And too. one of the rooms in the back of the, like, uh, one of the rooms has like two beds. The sides has all the posters of all the old movies, and That's then cool. on the back, and then the, above it is like his, like his foot or his claw. Yeah, or he's like just walking around. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, look up, look this up. This is cooler than the Atari thing. Just Godzilla Hotel Tokyo. Yeah, and click the the little website page. It has like a little Godzilla walking around. So I assume when yeah. you're in your hotel, you can look out and just see. Like Godzilla if I ever chilling. go to Japan, I would. That's where this is where I I would be staying. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if this is expensive. That's that's my thing. Like I was just thinking of the Atari thing. Like if it's not expensive, I mean I'll check it out. God, look at this food. This looks delicious. But like I don't know how if how I would feel about Atari because I'm just never been so I've never <laughs> been in, to care I guess about it. I, was, I wasn't laughing at you, so I was just scrolling through and looking at all this like, exotic food, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god, like what is? Some, I've never tried some of this stuff. And at the very yeah. bottom, Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I just wasn't expecting. Oh, and there's a pizza. Yeah, I can. I know what pizza looks like. Udon, Chicago. Oh, there's another stuff. Moving on. This uh, uh, very cool looking stuff. I, I yeah. want to go there now. Thank you for ruining Atari Hotel. <laughs> um, but anyways, Alex. Hmm. You know how my father loves classical games, right? Yes, he does. Over on New York Times, they made an article all about collecting classic games. This is by Jason Bailey. Vintage baseball cards. Antique coins and rare comic books originally bought for pennies now regularly sell for millions of dollars, sending enthusiasts in pursuit of the next hot collectible. Hmm. Retro video games. Interest in factory-sealed video games have soared in the past year with some companies aggressively targeting collectors with more established markets. The hottest investments are games with the Nintendo Entertainment System, which popularized characters like Link, Mega Man, and Mario in the 1980s. Collectors have been able to quickly flip the most coveted titles, making thousands of dollars in profit and fueling concerns of unsustainability hype. One collector, Donald Brock Jr., who (laughs) runs the website Columbia Comics, said he has spent about $50,000 buying vintage video games since his first purchase in March. One sealed NES game cost nearly $1,500. He had his condition graded and then sold it more than $12,000. Oh, my God. The top end of the market has been invigorated. In September, Eric Neyerman, a dentist who had primarily yeah. collected sports cards, spearheaded a $1 million purchase Just, of oh dozens of God. games months after video game collectors jointly bought a rare Super Mario Bros. game for more than $100,000. A copy of the original Mega Man recently sold at auction for $75,000. Wow. Okay. Collectors say that multiple gold copies of Nintendo World Champions, which is the one I know, is super rare. Only 26 were distributed, making one of the rarest NES games have reached the six-figure threshold in private sales. Goodness. In collectibles markets, prices are highest when significance and scarcity overlap. A prime example is Action Comics number one, Alex. Mm-hmm. The 1938 issue whose cover features Superman's debut. Yep. There are thought to be about 100 surviving, surviving co- copies, yeah. and a rail-preserved version has fetched three... Point two million yeah. dollars yep. at auction. I remember that. I remember when uh, when it sold. I it was too. yeah. There was a news. Um, um, did you see that? Uh, Henry Cavill has uh, one of the surviving copies. He has one of them for in the he. Uh, it was a million dollars and it was gifted to him. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. It was so cool. I was like, damn, that looks awesome. A copy once owned by the actor Nicolas Cage sold for eighty two, eighty two thousand. $500 in 1992, 150000 in 1997, and $2.2 million. Is this the same exact copy? They just got it got more uh, it got it got more worth over over time. Yes, this okay, copy the from Nicholas Cage. Nicolas Cage yes. Okay, yeah, 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 not the previous one for thirty three point okay. two. This so is the one, copy. Jesus, in two thousand two point two million. Two point two. Whoa! It more than quadrupled its value. Oh it, God, More than yeah. ten. It it it. <laughs> I don't know what the, the word is for t- ten times your value, phone? but I don't know, Alex. Why are you asking me that question? I was gonna use the calculator to do some math, yeah. and I don't even have my phone in this room. <laughs> uh, you can go grab it. I can uh, fill in the time. Mister Luce, who organized the group of Super Mario Bros. buyers, that includes Mister Holprin, is c- 
confident in the investment, trusting that future collectors will care about Mario because the character is embedded in, in pop culture, which I don't think he's wrong in that. I, I, I agree. There are certain things in our culture that probably will stick around. Things like Mickey Mouse will probably still be popular. Um, things like Super Mario Brothers uh, will still be popular. It, it is almost when you're collecting things like a stock market, right? Like When you think about it, you're holding on to things hoping that one day that it will accumulate a value that is greater than either what you purchased it for or what you plan on reselling it for and i've never been one of those people that would hoard something and try to make a lot of money off of it i've always just kind of done my own thing there's been a few things and my girlfriend is actually really into it where you know you'll buy two things and you'll be like well just in case it gets a little popular later on we'll have an extra one to sell um for an exuberant amount of money i usually uh, aren't too interested in, in selling it for the highest value. I usually sell for a more medium value to sell it quicker rather than try and get a big sell. Um, but uh, let's go back to the article. Quote, this is by, um, yeah, this is by, uh, this is Mr. Lee's talking again, I believe. Uh, quote, to me, Super Mario Brothers or Le- uh, Legend of Zelda are artworks that are far more important than, say, the Mona Lisa, quote, end quote, <laughs> said Mr. Lee, who tried unsuccessfully to sell the Super Mario copy for one million dollars in a recent episode of Pawn Stars. Oh, that's funny. I kind of want to watch that episode now. <laughs> me too. I, I like Pawn Stars. Yeah, I see. Um, <laughs> I uh, Pawn Stars was a, a household show. Oh yeah, when I was in high school, me, yeah. me and my dad mm. uh, and, and, and Carrie. Yeah, turns on. We sit down. We watch Pawn Stars. Oh yeah. See what 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 they what do they bring into the Pawn Star family this week? Yeah, right. What's Chum? What's Chum gonna sell? Oh huh? God. And um, uh, I can't help but disagree with Mr. Lee's here. Um, he says, quote, To me, Super Mario Brothers and Le- Legend of Zelda are artworks that are far more important than, say, the Mona Lisa. There's Ooh. one version of the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah, right? There are multiple Super Mario and Legend of Zelda's, at least right now. So I don't believe those two are comparable. Um, very much so. And I, and there is no question that the Mona Lisa is valued more than any video game. Is oh, no. Um, but... I do see what he's saying. These are valuable things. And the article is yeah. actually very good. I recommend everyone head over to New York Times, give them the click and, and read through. They go into more deep things like yeah. um, some people are overvaluing things just because they think it's sealed, it means money. Mm-hmm. And uh, this gentleman, not Mr. Leash, but I believe Mr. Let me grab his name again. I, what, I think it was Donald Brock. I believe it was Donald Brock Jr. Um, who he'll t- people will buy a game mm. and uh, be like, hey, uh, will this make keep value? And he's like, not really. You probably really shouldn't even buy it if you're planning on reselling it, but they'll buy it anyways just because yeah. they think sealed is just going to mean so much more. And mm-hmm. he just disagrees with that notion. He's like, just because it's sealed doesn't mean it has an automatic value. Oh, no. And there's also an argument mm-hmm. in the community that some of these numbers are inflated and aren't correct. There oh, are wow. probably people trying to up the value of their own collection like for instance mm-hmm. the um uh, uh, uh let's see the, the private collection of the nintendo world champions they're mm-hmm. like eh, did that probably sell for six figures who knows maybe yeah. but they are very rare and I, the 26 is right there's only 26 of those so I mean, it's not like yeah. you can get that game i know uh i'm a huge fan of avgn he has one oh, him wow. and his friend they have they both have the gold and silver one Oh wow, that's crazy! Pretty wild, because that's a I mean, that's expensive. Yeah, <laughs> that's very expensive. I'm sure my dad would love to oh, yeah. grab his hands on one of those, just because it's so so rare and so cool. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about the action action uh, comics number one. Just I just want one. Copy. I just want one copy too. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, it doesn't have to be make conditions or anything. Just give me one history. that's like that's not ripped mm-hmm. or like like or any missing pages, mm-hmm. and I'm good. And I'll just hang it up. So I believe. Um, uh, uh, I believe Greg Miller took a tour of DC once mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they let him touch the reprint copy they have of Action Comics. Oh, wow. So it's not a. Sorry, I said I misspoke. The copy of Action Comics they use for reprints, oh. but it's one of the originals. Gotcha, gotcha. <sighs> That's cool. You put on gloves. Yeah. Touched it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, just like, oh, I'd yeah. love to get a tour. See what's in there. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be See cool. that vault. You know they got guards. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I would love to see that. Alex, we're talking about collectors. Do you have anything that you would you have bought that you would maybe think one day will have a lot of value? Or is there something that you you think you keeping will retain some sort of value like these things do? Um, I don't have them anymore. 
my dad has them now but i used to have this spawn collection of figures mm-hmm. i love those those figures man those mm-hmm. were so cool and it had a, it was a set of five of them and those were so cool because they just i've never seen them before and um i don't have those anymore but i actually have to this day still it's a um, the superman uh it's, it's an old toy it's like uh it's an old superman toy from the animated series and if you hit the side the side of there's a button on the on his side and like i guess it just makes noise and the cape moves i've yet to open it from the box and it's it's, pretty cool. it's been sitting and i've had it for 15 years maybe mm-hmm. i've had it for so long I've, it's never been opened I mean, I think the box is kind of wearing down now, like the the those edges, you know, the pl- the paper or whatever is thinning. But I just don't want don't want to open it. Yeah, it's like a, it's almost like a memory now, yeah. right? Yeah, because I'm sure it's never gonna get value. I just think it's so cool. Like you know, you never know. You never know, right? Yeah. I remember my Yu-Gi-Oh cards fetched. Oh um, yeah, were really cool. Oh yeah. Um, I I liked keeping my Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards. Mm-hmm. I had a bunch of those. Yeah. I kept around them. Um, I don't really have. I think anything of value that I keep around. I have a lot of pops that I could, that I could probably yeah. sell. Those are just mainly for Lixies. I don't really plan on selling most of them. Mm-hmm. I usually sell things that I'm like, ah, I don't really need this anymore, or <clears throat> if I need space in the house, things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Alex? Yes. I have a question. What's your Master question? Two. Yes. Celebrated its 10 year anniversary um, over this past week. Um, I believe it was a few days ago. What are some memories that keep from Mass Effect Two? This is where we. Uh, hit the end of the show where we relax talk a, give a give a quick topic or two maybe and uh really discuss something and i want to discuss a little bit of mass effect too but first i want to tell the achievers mm. to head over to patreon.com slash easy achievers to give us the buck to get that exclusive like i said we had a lot of fun doing that one this was a really good one this is the start of the full year of patreon exclusives you get again only a dollar um that achievement unlock was for the one <laughs> what episode is this uh, 28. 28. This is that that achievement was for the twenty eighth Patreon plug I have done. <laughs> and I'm very proud of that one. Um, so yes, like I said, patreon.com slash easy achievers. Give us the buck for the Patreon exclusive. Five bucks to get everything early. Um, we really appreciate any help you support us with, especially to help us get that MacBook replaced. Um, please, because it's on its last legs. <laughs> yeah, and I'm probably gonna have to shell out money to get another one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for listening. We're gonna head into Mass Effect Two. What are some memories? When did you first play it? How god. old were you? Oh god, I don't remember. Mass Effect 2? Oh, goodness. This game was already out when I even knew about it, because you introduced me to yeah, it. Yeah, I, I told you about it. I remember this. I, played, my- I actually, I'm, surpri- I'm glad I played 2 before 3 had came out, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, goodness. I do remember that Mass Effect 2 was one of the first games that helped me realize how important decision making and romances in games affect me mm-hmm. so i'm like I like like it, it really it's it, like it would be important to me to keep this character alive mm-hmm. or romance this one or yeah. you know their stories and their um interactions with each other like this is one of the first ones other than dragon age oh for sure i completely 100 percent agree with that i remember when i first heard about this game so i was a fan of the original mass effects mm-hmm. And then E3, I believe, 2008. I was watching E3 2008. And before that even aired, there were rumors that Commander Shepard had died between the events of Mass Effect 1 and 2. Mm. And 2 was going to introduce someone else, possibly, or or something else. Or, or, but, but I didn't know. Yeah. Um, and maybe, you know, this, this is probably a marketing ploy, I'm sure. Um, but So going into 2, there was this E3 trailer. I think, like I said, I think it was E3 2008. And a guy is giving an interview, and he's like, "Yeah, so we want to say Commander Shepard's alive." Everyone claps, like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. he's alive!" And then he details he does die, but mm-hmm. he comes back to life in this kind of Cerberus project. Yes, Cerberus from one the um, anti alien project that that were run by humans, bringing him back, and they need you to fight the collectors that are going to lead to the Reapers coming back and things like that. So that got me excited. Then I get Mass Effect 2, like two years later, mm. play that. Love the game. Don't realize until I beat the game what the loyalty missions are. That you have to like talk to them and like get to know them more. Because I didn't understand that as I'm like a mechanic. Like mm-hmm. I'm like supposed to keep going back to them over and over again. To eventually like basically build trust. 
Yeah. And then they'll be like, all right, well, I kind of need help with this thing. And then you go do it. And then they're like, okay, we're good. And then once you get everyone loyalty, then you have to like put them um, in the right squad at the end of the game, which was a really cool thing too. But yeah, Mass Effect 2 was the point that brought me over to the like, full uh, Mass Effect love. Mm-hmm. Mass Effect 1, of course, being hardcore RPG, really good storytelling. And then moving into 2 with the suicide mission and all that. Um, was a really good experience and I loved every second of it. Um, it says it was formally unveiled at the Game Developers Conference on March 17, 2009. Right, that's when it was unveiled. Yeah. Um, it so said accompanied by a teaser trailer declaring Shepard was killed in action. Right. Yeah. So that was probably something after that. Okay. So there was probably at some point somewhere later someone's like, because that was the teaser that said he died and yeah, then yeah, we yeah, later yeah. on told that he was alive. Yeah. Which is wild. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, those games were really fun. Really fun. Any memories of the game specifically? I loved the layer mm. of the Shadow Broker DLC. That was one of my oh, favorite DLCs yeah, 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 yeah. ever. That was an awesome Yeah, Shadow DLC. Broker. The poke fun, the couple meta jokes they had where um, I remember when you could slap Omni Gel and everything. That was a uh, yeah. funny joke. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, we don't do that anymore. Um, I really enjoyed... Miranda's story. Yeah. She yeah. was this bioengineered yeah, like, clone kind of um of the father. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. He spent like a billion yeah, dollars she was to make made a to be perfect. Person. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect like looks for espionage and yeah. biotics, of course. And then some sort of tech skills too. Kinda messed up though, her like her dad did that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets what he he gets what he deserves in three. Mm. He he, mm. he he was mean. He almost he tried to kill the sister. Yeah, remember yeah, he, yeah, they yeah, made yeah. a sister. And then, it wasn't that during the Citadel DLC. No, that, no? That, that's in that's so she is involved in the Citadel DLC. But this yeah. that, that this is that's her loyalty mission. Oh, gotcha. She gotcha. finds out about the sister, asks Shepard that she needs a favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, do yeah, the favor, yeah. then right. that's how you guys get close. Gotcha. Um, Garrus. Great. Uh, yeah. Great in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love Garrus. I didn't expect to like grunt. <laughs> yeah. Which is yeah. Uh, the Krogan you get. And it was cool yeah. having those dynamics when you get his loyalty mission to go mm-hmm. and talk to Rex. You get to talk to Rex from the first game, and then yes. the Rex and Grunt have a conversation. Yeah, it's crazy with uh, Garrus because the, at first you're like, oh, there's like this, there's uh, this archangel guy. Archangel guy, and he's you're like, taking out all of the. the yep. As soon as you see the armor, you're like, is that? No. And then it pops up in his Then Garrus. you can tell it's a, a Turian, but you don't think it's Garrus. Yeah, right. And then you get up there, he takes off the, the helmet. The thing, yep. It's like. I didn't know you were alive, Shepard. You're like, what? It's Garrus. I yeah. remember freaking out as a kid because I didn't know who Archangel was. I only knew their code names. I just mm-hmm. I didn't know who it was. Jack, yeah. one of the uh, saddest things, mm-hmm. being abducted, being experimented on to become yeah, a yeah. biotic freak, yeah, and then becomes a she's strong, basically though. a mass murderer. Yeah, yeah, but she's super strong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, things I didn't like too much. Samara kind of bored me. I did like her idea of her. But like I, I didn't love the execution of Jack Samara. Oh, Samara. Samara. Okay, okay, gotcha, oh, sorry. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't love the execution. The uh, her loyalty mission ends up being cool though, because you mm-hmm. have to like seduce her daughter because she's I forget the name of it, but basically like a girl who if she mates with someone that she kills them. Oh so God, have, I forgot. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So you about have to kill them because yeah. they get like addicted to it. And mm-hmm. you have to, it's, it's the, it gets like very dark. Who? Oh yeah, yeah. In my opinion, honestly, in that mission, <laughs> like it's like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go find this like weird thing, mm-hmm. uh, and that was fun. Um, yeah, suicide mission was great. So, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I did love how they ended the game as well, um, leading perfectly into three and hyping me up like a lot for three. Alex. Mm. Let's end today's show with what we started with. Okay. We need a name for this Kingdom Hearts Project Xehanort title. You've been workshopping some. Mm -hmm. I've been not workshopping some. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun. What is your first guess? My first guess. Ugh. All right. Good guess. Yeah. All right. That's his first guess, ladies and gentlemen. My, my, My first guess. Xehanort's dark <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i'll have his name or 355 days oh, over xehanort don't do that again or yummy 
If you don't know, that's new Justin Bieber song called Yummy. Ugh. That's the inspiration about the game. It's Yummy. Mm-hmm. It's about Xehanort's discover of darkness and its yumminess. It should be a... What's that place called? That uh, It was at the end of Game Hearts. That, the Which Scala one? at Column, Scala I think. At Column, yeah. That, that should... The no, that's three, three words. Three letters. Three oh, words, yeah, yeah. It's so two it's words, eight letters. Two words, eight letters. Uh, all together, right? Oh, I didn't say. Oh, okay. I just said two, wor- uh, two words, eight letters. So that's, it probably means in total. Yeah. Uh, mm. Something simple. Darkness. Dark beginning, no. Darkness Dark is, eight, eight is eight letters. Dark. That begins uh, is too many. Oath? No. It probably won't be dark. Yeah, no. I so it will probably be no name. <laughs> it won't be no name. Um, it's probably something that's been said before, too, that's which what is I'm upsetting. Thinking. Because I'm trying to think of all the times that Master or Master's guys talk. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember any of them. I swear to God, if it's Xehanort, I'm going to kill myself. Mm. It's, it, actually, I remember seeing, it was like a scrolling down, mm-hmm. and it said, Kingdom Hearts, Xehanort, and it had, like, you know how Kakarot has the Dragon Ball, the, the Kamehameha? Yeah. It, it's this Keyblade in blue, like, and it says, Ka- and it, instead of Kakarot, it says Xehanort. Of course. <laughs> it's it, it's going to be something like artsy, like Shattered Dream, or something like that. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> or, um... No, I, I'm so I'm so fixated on begin or something like that, you know, like some something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, dark await. No, dark awaits isn't right. Mm-hmm. And see, I, and my thing is that they're not saying that it is. Um, Knowing this franchise, it has nothing to do with, with Xehanort, yeah. so it's literally going to be just two words that. Don't I mean, really Xehanort mean. is eight letters, but mm. it's going to be like. Key Anort because it's that weird X mm-hmm. that's in the game now. It's a keyblade, but it, it says X. Like, what? Hmm. Dark Seeker. Oh. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> right. Alex, mm. what are you going to play this week? Are any gaming plans? I'm, I'm going to go do that thousand Subnautica. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. We uh, I retweeted something. I don't think I retweeted. I think I just sent it to Alex. It was yeah. basically you can play Subnautica under an hour and get every achievement in the game. Yep, with a guide, of course. And it's on Game Pass, so yes, it we is. We didn't have to pay anything, so we're just gonna jump on there, get a quick thousand in. Yep. Boost up that gamer score. Yeah. Alex, where, where are you sitting at? You know. Well, gamer score. My gamer score. Yeah. I think I'm at two forty eight. I want to get. I think I'm about. A, I think I haven't checked it after I beat Kin, uh, Kingdom Hearts, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, but I think I'm at one fifty nine thousand. That sounds right. I'm trying to hit one sixty. One sixty is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You're right there, right? Mm-hmm. I think I'm at two forty eight. I'm close. I I'm gonna have to get this Subnautica and then something mm-hmm. else. Um. All right. That's it. <laughs> oh, hey, wait. You, that's it, right? Subnautica? Anything else? Well, you I'm finished just, Kakarot. I, right? I, yeah, that's why I was, took that pause because I was trying to think and see if I, am I going to play anything else. I mean, I guess I can finish Kakarot, like doing all the other stuff. I tried a thousand. I times. might because I'm still in that mode, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going back to Kingdom Hearts, probably. Yeah. Maybe some Apex. Kind of mm, feeling it. Yeah? A little bit, yeah. I might join you. I don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta see if I'm in the mood. Yeah, I gotta be in the mood for these games because like it it ebbs and flows. And it's, I it's, jump on it, I jump off it, I jump yeah. on it. Yeah, and see, well, like I've been saying, and uh, guys, tw- uh, tweet at us and let me know if it's worth it. I'm really in an Elder Scrolls mm-hmm. vibe, and I'm debating. If we have an Elder Scrolls Online listener, yes, whether you love it, you like it, you hate it, yeah. tweet at us. Is Just it let us worth know. It? Because I really want to get Graymore. Yeah, we're debating it. And I really want it because the pack that it comes with, the, the old, old thing, it comes with uh, Elsewire, which I really want to play. That's the one I really want to play. And it comes with all the other ones for 60 bucks. And I was like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a lot of expansions. That's yeah, you get content. three, four expansions for 60 bucks. And I've heard Elsewire is pretty good. Yeah, so I'm debating on getting it so I can start Elsewire mm-hmm. and have that done before. I heard the Elsewire class is good. Yeah, like that's why I remember the game so much. Yeah, they, they said the Necromancer. Well, they sh- is I remember. Fun. I remember they a couple E3s ago they showed off the trailer with the dragons and all that stuff, and that's it a, dope. Yeah. yeah. 
so cool. This new one looked cool too because remember yeah, I with, sent it with to the you. vampire. I sent it in, and yeah, there's like a vampire lord mm-hmm. about to kill because yeah, you're back at the heart of Skyrim. The heart of Skyrim. So I'm really debating on it, man. Yeah, and it, it's cool that this game has like f- blossomed into this it's, giant uh, world. It's still going. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, it's like it's like wow, but like for consoles. I remember my grandfather said he liked it um, because in WoW you pick one class, mm-hmm. where in this one you can be whatever you want. Be whatever you want. You can that's, be a mage yeah. with heavy armor if you really want to. Yeah. And the the thing that they I like that they changed is that that we can all play together now because before it had like the weird alliances yeah, like or factions. Things, yeah. yeah, and you can. Like, I don't know yeah. why MMOs like to do that. I think it's because mm-hmm. WoW did it, and they're like, "Oh, we can do that too." And it's like you don't have to. Though. Yeah, you, can just, do, you can be different. We just all want to play together. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I might jump on that and see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I'll download it and uh, and jump on with you. Yeah, I remember we tried to play a little bit of it, but it just we yeah. just jumped. So off. that's why I was saying I'm gonna jump on and see if it's still hitting me, and if it does, then I might get it. Good, that's good to hear, Alex. I'm yeah. gonna uh, probably polish off Kingdom Hearts three mm-hmm. by the time we record the next episode, um, and after that, I'm unknown. I'm not gonna lie, Alex. I, I mean, we you got said you want to wait on Dark Siders. Mm-hmm. Um, I might. When is Dark Siders? February or March? February, isn't February? it? Yeah, it should be I February. Kinda, I kind of ponder on that one, man. I'm, I mean, I'm excited. I, it's co op, so we yeah, need to yeah, play it together. It, yeah. it doesn't look like a game that's fun by that's, itself. And so. it's 40. So I'm it's down. Not, yeah. I'm down if you'd um, like. We'll, we'll I'll, see. I'll leave it to you. We'll see. Um, you know what? We should leave it to the listeners and see what they say. Leave it to the listeners. If you think we should play Genesis and you want to hear our thoughts, tweet at us. And, yeah. if, and if there's enough people that are like, that want us to hear it, then we'll buy it and yeah. we mess around with it. Um, but thank you guys for thank you listening. Guys. Thank you so much. Um, we are the Easy Achievers. We come at you every Friday, um, midnight, right? Yeah, Friday midnight. Oh, yeah, which yeah. like, if, hey, if you run the late shift at yeah. your at your show, oh, we'll yeah, be yeah. live every as soon as it hit. Technically Friday, every mm-hmm. literally when it hits Friday. Boom. Yeah. It might be twelve thirty one o'clock if I realize what time it is and I'm just so tired. I'm like, oh god, I need to post this. Ah, ah, and you're mashing buttons and yep. be like, oh, and post, then, post, post, and then and then you sleep. Yeah, but yeah, Friday uh, Patreon again that dollar for the Patreon exclusive again. We have really fun with that one. I, I, yeah, I do. do like that one. Give us a dollar for that one. Five dollars for everything early, and that's everything. Thank you for listening and uh, to our garbage. Have a good one.